Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to show you kind of the different things that you go into making an underwater scene and kind of the things you have to consider and keep in mind. And uh, as I kind of go through these things, um, the, the things that go into an underwater scene, I'll have a link, a link on the bottom that goes to another tutorial that will go in-depth on that particular, uh, that particular thing. And um, I'm going to kind of make those over time. So they won't all be made right away. You'll just have to kind of wait until they get uploaded. But uh, if you want to see one sooner rather than later, then just add a comment. Say like, hey, I really want you to do one on fog or something like that. And uh, I'll just kind of explain that ahead of time. Okay, so this is my underwater scene here. Uh, there's two main kinds of underwater scenes. The first is where the map is completely underwater like this, where no matter where I want to go here, it's all going to be underwater, and I've got it set up so that if you wanted to go up to the surface, well, it's not really made for that. You, uh, do you see what I mean? Like, you go above the water, and you're still underwater, if you know what I mean, uh, because the whole scene is made to be underwater. All right, and there's a few specific differences between that and a scene that's only partially underwater, like this pool scene here. See, because... Here I am above the water, and then when I go below the water, it's got a completely different type of look and effect. But it's only for that one particular part of the map that's underwater. Do you see what I mean? So I'll kind of go through some of the differences here on uh, what's gonna what's gonna be the best practices for one type or another, and um, the, just the things that you have to keep in mind between the two different ones. Okay, so the first thing you're really going to want to do is look for really good source material. So before you can make something look good, you really have to know what it looks like in the first place. So uh, just some place like Google Images is a good place to start. So make like, uh, look for things like underwater or uh, maybe like under the ocean. You know, just things like that. Things that are really going to give you... Um, fish under the sea, let's see what that looks like. Anyway, it's just things like this that are kind of going to give you a good idea of, of uh, what type of thing to to look for and to try to achieve. Um, depending on the look you're specifically trying to go for, though, there's certain things you might want to look for instead of others. So, like, you know, like just a minute ago here, I showed you, here's my under the ocean scene. But the, the source material I want to look at is quite a bit different there than it is if I want to make a pool like my other map. You know, it's a completely different type of look and effect. So you just kind of want to kind of, um, you know, look for something that's going to be specific for what you're looking for. Um, but then, depending on, like, if you want to look at something more specific, you know, like if you want to look at the way that caustics are shined underneath the water or something like that, there's, uh, you know, it, there's just different kind of things you want to look for. And then another good place to look is actually um, just YouTube. Look for things like, you know, sa same types of things, underwater, or maybe like uh, scuba diving. You know, things like that that are going to give you kind of good in-motion results so that you can really see what you're looking at. Oh. Another good thing to really pay attention to is the way that other games have created the same effect. So you might want to look for like Crisis, uh, Ocean, or something. You know, and just take a look at things like this, and to be able to actually see, like, uh, let's look for Crisis Underwater. You know, to actually be able to see the way that they did certain things. Um, it, of course, if you can actually play it yourself and, and look at the source, that's even better. Uh, let's look for uh, Bioshock 2 has some neat underwater parts. Uh, you know, and even, like, Gears of War 3 had a, a nice underwater part, things like that. Um but it's really going to give you kind of a good idea of, like, you know, what did they think was important to to achieve a nice underwater effect, and how can I take those ideas and apply it to whatever my uh, scene is. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you some of the key features here of making an under, underwater scene and what's really going to make it uh, look and feel like it's underwater. Um, this is just kind of something I threw together, but hopefully it'll give you kind of a good idea of the type of thing you're going to want to do. These are all just normal UDK assets. Um, I added the Iron Guard here to kind of show the sense of scale uh, to see that you're actually pretty deep under the water here. Um, 
Okay, now let's talk real quick about kind of the basic components of an underwater scene. Now, the, the first thing that you'll want is uh, to make sure that they can physically see that they're underwater. Um, so I've got like my actual, you know, surface of the water and the waves and everything up here, you know, and I've got light rays coming through. And then uh, another thing is that when you're deep underwater, you've got a certain amount of like fog and blurriness that's, that accompanies just the fact of being underneath the water. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so if you look here with like scuba diving, you can immediately immediately see just by looking at the thumbnails that you you very quickly start to get kind of foggy and hazy and it kind of starts to lose the definition and get a, get a little bit blurry. So that's one thing there. I've got kind of a fog and a bit of a blur effect on top of that. Uh, another thing is the lighting and caustics. So for lighting, you know, in real life you don't see this strong of an effect, but um, it's just kind of become this this common stylized effect that you really want these super strong light rays coming through the, the surface of the water. And then, a as you can see just by looking at it here, the the idea is that the light is kind of it's kind of like refracted as it comes through the surface of the water and comes all the way down through the water, and that's going to show up as caustic. So you can see how the the uh, light as it hits the ground here is very dynamic. It's not um, it's not solid lighting. That's supposed to look like caustics. Now whether I did a good job, uh, who knows? But it's just kind of to give you an idea. And um, and this particular scene, I was able to. Uh, to do it so that it affects like the assets as well here and um, I'll show you a different way that I had to do it for a pool scene as well um, because well I'll, I'll show you you'll see but anyways the important part is here so lighting actually plays a pretty big effect uh, the the depth of the water is going to play an effect on the way that the caustics show up just like in real life uh, the deeper you are the less uh, pronounced they are and the the less sharp they are, they're kind of more like broad strokes rather than like fine lines. And then uh, I'll show you it's going to be quite a bit different in the pool scene as well. Anyways, uh, another thing here is how deep you are should affect how how hard it is to see, like how, uh, how foggy it is, how much light is getting through to the bottom, things like that. And uh, those are all things you'll have to set up yourself. It's a very specific process of doing it. Um, another really important thing is adding a, sem a sense of volume and scale. Uh, so like a really simple effect that I did here is I added these little particles that float downward um, just to kind of give you a sense that, you know, you're not in an, like an empty vacuum. You're actually in this, this area that has some depth to it. And uh, I added like little bubbles here and things like that. Um, just a, a lot of little things like that really give it a different type of feeling and they're not necessarily supposed to feel like overpowering like you're not supposed to sit there and, and feel like these particles are falling all over the place uh, it's just supposed to kind of give you the feeling without maybe necessarily noticing it um, and again if you take a look at some of the source material you'll see that there's a lot of random uh, particles and little floaty things that are falling through the water and it's just a natural part of being in the ocean As far as this fog goes, I wanted to show you this also. Uh, it's just the same effect that you see in real life with like distant mountains. It's just like that, except that it's to an even stronger extent because it's water instead of air that you're looking through. So water is quite a bit thicker. Water, uh, you know, you, you're not going to have as much uh, light coming through as you go further down and things like that. So you're going to want to affect the uh, color of the fog and things like that, depending on how deep you are. Uh, because you can see, again, looking at our source here, um, depending on how deep you are, you can really see a difference in how bright the coloring is. Another important thing is uh, the whole coloration of the scene. And um, I really try to show you with the pool map that I added like color toning and things like that so that as you go underneath the water, the whole scene takes on a different look. And we'll talk a little bit about that because the way that the way the water actually works is it kind of uh, absorbs some of the red and green, and so that's what makes it so that water tends to look blue as you go underneath, and that's also going to affect the color of our fog and things like that. Um, so color toning and fog color, those are going to be really important. Um, 
And then kind of lastly here, I also added this uh, distortion effect on the entire screen as you can kind of see how things are kind of waving around a little bit. Um, again, this is kind of more of like a stylized thing like you see here um, rather than actual. But it's something that you really do see in a lot of games where like in Crisis or Bioshock, um, you see kind of this distortion effect to really push the fact that you're underwater. And uh, again, it's maybe not the most realistic thing in the world, but it, it really does kind of, like I say, push it even harder that you're underwater. So those are really the basic components of an underwater scene. And uh, I'll kind of show you them individually as separate tutorials here. So uh, again, if you have any specific ones that you want to see sooner rather than later, uh, just post a comment, say, hey, I want to see this now. And uh, I'll, I'll try to get to it sooner. So there you go. And uh, hopefully this will help you out um, both as the short little piece here and the future tutorials as I make them. So good luck.